We have no obligation to cooperate with the Marines, save where the government is directly involved. Your question shall remain unanswered. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today we're taking a look at the enigma that is Bartholomew Kuma. Now the earliest known information we have about Kuma's past comes courtesy of Perona, who stated that he was once an extraordinarily violent pirate, known to be brutal beyond measure. Through his actions, he earned the epithet Tyrant, and was eventually invited by the world government to become one of the Seven Warlords of the Sea. The audience is first introduced to Kuma just after the Alabaster Arc. As one of the Warlords of the Sea, he was summoned to a gathering on Marijuana by Fleet Admiral Sengoku following the defeat of fellow Warlord Sir Crocodile. And being, probably, the most loyal of the Warlords, he was one of only three who bothered to attend. During this time, Kuma said a grand total of nothing, however his presence was absolutely felt. He is a towering man, standing at 689 centimeters tall, or just over 22 feet, and his bounty, prior to it being frozen, was revealed to have been 296 million berries, which was an absolutely staggering amount at the time. Other than that, his only distinguishable feature was that he carried a Bible with him at all times. Now we already have a bit of a conflict developing here because this is seriously at odds with the information given to us by Perona. In our first meeting with Kuma, he is calm, collected, and seemingly unquestionably loyal to the world government. There was no trace of brutality or even violence. In fact, he seemed like an almost benevolent figure. We would not see or hear of Kuma again for a couple of hundred chapters until he appeared on Thriller Bark to notify fellow Warlord of the Sea, Gecko Moria, of Sir Crocodile's replacement. He further issued Moria a warning that the Straw Hat Pirates, who had grown in notoriety after the events of any slobby, were in his vicinity, and even offered to help Moria deal with them. Of course, Moria being Moria, quite angrily declined his help, and Kuma proceeded to witness Moria's defeat at the hands of the Straw Hat Pirates. Kuma was then ordered directly by the world government to eliminate any witnesses to Moria's defeat, including the Straw Hat Pirates. And this is where two very important pieces of information about Kuma would be revealed. Firstly, he possesses a Paramecia-type devil fruit known as the Niku Niku no Mi. Now this is one of the weirder fruits in the series, but its power essentially gives Kuma paw pads on his palms that are able to push or deflect anything. And yes, that sounds ridiculous, but it's actually quite powerful. It allows him to push air in a forceful enough way so as to launch projectile attacks, as well as using pressure to create massive shockwaves. One of his signature moves, Ursa's Shock, was used to defeat the entirety of the Straw Hat Pirates, excluding Zoro and Sanji. Now that sounds pretty cool, but this Devil Fruit gets a lot weirder. He has a particular technique that really pushes the semantic boundaries of this fruit, whereby Kuma is able to literally push pain and fatigue out of a person. He used this ability on Luffy after his battle with Moria, and then transferred the pain entirely into the body of Zoro. The ensuing damage left Zoro on the brink of death, however he remained standing and as a result, Kuma defied his orders from the world government and allowed the Straw Hat Pirates to leave Thriller Bark safely. But even that isn't the full extent of the Niku Niku no Mi's abilities. Kuma is able to use his pads to create enough force to send someone or something flying to just about anywhere in the world, even if it takes several days of air travel to get there. And while it's never been explicitly shown, it has been assumed that this is how Bartholomew Kuma travels the world. And also, this ability is extraordinarily important to the story, and we'll get to why in a second. But first, did I mention that Bartholomew Kuma is a cyborg? Well, yes, that's a thing. As it turns out, Bartholomew Kuma was originally a human being who was gradually modified over time to become a full cyborg by the elusive Dr. Vegapunk. This further enhanced Kuma's ability, allowing him to fire laser beams, increased his durability significantly, and gave him his own information network, much like a computer. In fact, exactly like a computer. Exactly why or how this arrangement came about is unknown. However, it has also led to the development of a whole line of cyborgs based on Kuma's specs, known as the Pacifista. Each Pacifista is an almost identical clone of Bartholomew Kuma, and referred to by model number rather than a name. These model numbers begin with the letters PX followed by a number. Even Kuma himself got renamed apparently, being labelled PX0, denoting him as the original. Each pacifista has identical combat capabilities to Kuma, however Kuma is the only one with a devil fruit. In addition, Kuma can also be easily identified, as he is the only one to carry a bible. Alright, so this guy's starting to get a bit intriguing, isn't he? 
a once brutal pirate turned somewhat obedient cyborg, but we still have a whole nother layer of this character to explore, and it coincides with his next chronological appearance in the series at Sabadi Archipelago. After letting them escape from Thriller Bar, Kuma was one of two figures that would come to the rescue of the Straw Hat Pirates when they faced certain defeat at the hands of Admiral Kizaru. Also, this wasn't really seen as a rescue effort at first. Kuma used his Devil Fruit ability on the Straw Hat Pirates to scatter them one by one around the globe. When only Luffy remained, Kuma's final eerie message before he sent the captain flying was, We will not meet again. Now you could say that Bartholomew Kuma is single-handedly responsible for the two-year time skip that occurred in the story, but why would he do this? Well, that question would not go unanswered for long. The other figure who came to the rescue of the Straw Hat Pirates was Silver's Rayleigh, the surviving first mate of the Pirate King, Goldie Roger. Rayleigh allowed Kuma to scatter the Straw Hats after he was whispered a very straightforward message. I work for the Revolutionary Army. I want to help the Straw Hats escape. And just like that, mind blown. For those of you keeping score, this man is now officially involved with all three giant factions of the One Piece world. He was for all intents and purposes, and still is a pirate, but he also works for the world government while secretly working for the Revolutionary Army. But unfortunately, just as this guy was getting super interesting, this would be the last time we'd see Kuma act of his own free will. He was present at the Battle of Marineford, but his personality, or lack thereof, had noticeably shifted. Even one of his former revolutionary officers, Envoyo Evenkov, was confused at Kuma's changed persona. After the war ended, Kuma, or we should probably just call him PX0 now, returned to Sabadi Archipelago to guard the Thousand Sunny until one of the Straw Hats returned to it. This eventual Straw Hat would be Frankie, who discovered PX0 in an incredibly damaged state, which he sustained from protecting the Thousand Sunny for so long. It was then revealed that one of Kuma's final acts of humanity was to make a deal with Dr. Vegapunk to include programming this protection mission. And that event almost 300 chapters ago is the last we've seen of Kuma to this day. He has not been present at all post time skip in the New World, except in one exposition panel reaffirming his status as a current Warlord of the Sea, despite being a quote, mindless cyborg. So it is confirmed that PX0 is still at large, but it is assumed that all that was Bartholomew Kuma is gone. Some more fun facts about Kuma. Kuma's character name, and possibly his legend, is based on the real-life pirate Bartholomew Roberts, also known as Black Bart. Furthermore, Kuma was revealed to be effectively dead during the Battle of Marineford, which ended the Golden Age of Piracy in the One Piece world, while it was Black Bart's death that heralded the end of the Great Age of Piracy in the real world. The Kuma portion of his name is the Japanese word for bear, which echoes his character design as well as his devil fruit abilities. Following the dismissal of Gekko Moria, Kuma is officially the oldest and tallest member of the current Warlords of the Sea. Technically, Kuma is the first cyborg to appear in the series, making his entrance 96 chapters before Frankie, although it was unknown that he was a cyborg at the time. And finally, a truly useless fact. Kuma is consistently the least popular of the Warlords of the Sea, including both past and present members according to popularity polls, which is absolutely crazy considering the impact he's had on this series, but I guess it's just that lack of personality that has him landing so far down the list. And that pretty much does it for Bartholomew Kuma. All that he was may have departed, however there are still a lot of unanswered questions. Was Kuma an unforgiving and brutal pirate? Did he infiltrate the world government as a spy for the Revolutionary Army? And if so, why did he willingly give himself up to become a mindless cyborg? There is a hell of a lot more still to unpack about this character, and I very much look forward to getting those answers in the future. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe, and comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.